What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to use structs in Python to package binary data which can be very useful for example when transmitting data via sockets via the network. So let us get right into it. Alright, so in order to work with structs in Python, we don't have to rely on external packages, we can use the core Python module called struct. So let's go ahead and import struct right away here. This module allows us to package binary data in a structured way. So let's get started with a very simple example so that you can see what all of this is about. Let's say we have three simple integers 10, 20 and 30 that we want to package to one uh, byte stream that we want to transmit via the network, for example, because that is a use case of struct that we want to package data so that we can send it as a byte stream via the network. Because when I send something from my computer to another computer, via the internet, it's essentially just a byte stream um, that has a bunch of different bytes uh, in there. And if we don't have a format, we don't know what exactly is at what position in the byte stream. So this can be done using structs, we can define a format and then take these values and structure them into a byte stream, package them into a structured byte stream. So all values in computers are essentially bytes. So an integer usually takes up four bytes. And these numbers are integers which are going to be represented using four bytes. So what we can do here with struct is we can say that we want to create a byte stream, byte stream, you can call this variable whatever you want. Uh, we can say struct.pack, which is the packaging function, and we can then provide a format. A format is basically just a string that says, okay, what exactly is this byte stream? Because bytes can be interpreted in a number of different ways. An integer can actually be an integer or it can be an ASCII code for a character or it can be something else. So just because you have some bytes doesn't mean that you know what they're all about or what they mean or where they end because if you have four bytes and in integers, you can also have just two shorts, right? You can have two times two bytes or you can have one time uh, four bytes. So you don't really know what the byte stream is about if you don't provide a format. So in this case, we wanna have three integers and the character that we use here for integer is i. So if I say i, this is one integer. If I say i, i, this is two integers. And if I say uh, three times i, that is three integers. And all I have to do now is I have to provide these integers, in this case, 10, 20, and 30. And what will be the result of this uh, function uh, is those three numbers in a byte stream as three integers. So we can actually go ahead and print the byte stream. And what you're going to see is that we have uh, these four bytes here, four bytes here, and the four bytes here representing the individual integers, you can see that we have a lot of uh, zero bytes here, um, because we're representing quite small numbers, maybe we can change that by increasing the number. Uh, then you can see that, um, where is it? Maybe we should change this a little bit more. You can see that more bytes are now being used here. Um, However, this is essentially what we're doing here, we're packaging data that we have, this is, um, this, this is the data that we want to package. And here we define the format that we want to package this data in. So we can also go ahead now and say print struct dot calc size, and then we can pass um, an i here, so an integer essentially, and this is going to give us the result four. this means that we need four bytes, or we use four bytes to uh, represent integers, which means that when we say that something is an integer, it's going to use four bytes. If I want to have this as a short here, because all these three integers could actually be short, we can say h h h. And this is going to make them shorts. So I can also go ahead and say calculate the size of h, you can see two bytes. And you can see now that these values have only two bytes instead of four bytes, which is sufficient in this case, because we don't need more bytes to represent 10, 20 and 30. Uh, respectively, but if I increase the number now to I don't know 90,000, that should be too much for a short, you can see short format requires this, uh, this range here. And of course, I can also change this to capital H, then it's an unsigned short, um, basically meaning that it goes from zero to um, twice the limit. So I think if I'm not mistaken, something like 60,000 should actually work. No, okay, it doesn't work in this case. Oh, it should work if I use capital H like this. There you go. Now it works. But if I go with 90,000, this is not going to work. So this is just basic data types, you know, some data types take up more bytes, some data types uh, take up less bytes. 
the, the core thing here is that we can package multiple values into a byte stream given a certain format, and we can use the same format to extract these values then. Of course, I can also just take all the values and combine them and throw them together and expect them to be decoded in the proper way and invent some some algorithms uh, or some, some um, methods to decode the byte stream and to find the respective starting and ending tags or something like that. But if I have a simple string that says, okay, we have, um, I don't know, three strings or three characters followed by five integers followed by four floats and so on and so forth, we know that we have to expect these values and we can use the same format for packaging and for unpackaging, which, which can be very useful when transmitting data via the network. So let's see how we can unpackage this now. Let's go ahead and say, okay, data equals, or actually not data equals, we can say A, B, C equals because those are three values here. Let's change this back to 10. Those are three values here and we can take them and unpack them into three values. So we can say ABC equals struct.unpack and then I can provide the same format HHH um, and I can say give me the byte stream, right? And then I can print A, I can print B and I can print C. And you can see I got 10, 20, 30. Now what I can also do is I can say, okay, I have two shorts, 10 and 20, and I can interpret them as two shorts. Uh, so just A and B without C. And this also works, but I can also go ahead, okay, I package this as two shorts, but the byte stream is the byte stream. Two shorts are two times two bytes, which means one times four bytes. And I can also say, okay, I don't want to unpackage this as two shorts. I want to unpack this as one integer and then I will get a different result. Um, you can see the result is this one in this case. So the byte stream is just a byte stream. It has some some values in there but how you interpret these values depends on the format we provide. So let's take this to um, to a little bit more complicated formatting here. Let's say we have something like we have a company name which is neural 9 we have, um, I don't know, the day, month and year of the Neural9 creation. I'm just going to make up a date now, 1st of January 2022, which is obviously not correct. And then we have, I don't know, is Neural9 awesome? Yes or no? Yes, of course. So a Boolean, this is true. Let's say I want to package this data now into a struct. How do I do this? Very simple. I say struct.pack and the format is now that we have a bunch of characters here. So we don't have an identifier, we don't have a character for string here, we have to provide a certain number of characters in a row. In this case, neural nine has 10 characters. Uh, and it, by the way, this also has to be a byte uh, stream. So not just neural nine as a string, but B, and then neural nine as a string, making this a byte stream. Uh, but essentially, I can say 10 s for 10 characters, s is the identifier for characters. And writing 10 s is the same as writing multiple s's. So before we had III for three integers, you can also just say 3i for three integers. This is also a possibility. So by saying 10s, we're saying that we're reserving, uh, we're, we're using 10 characters here to represent the first value. Then we use uh, an integer, another integer, and another integer, or in this case, just 3i to represent day, month, and year. And then we use one Boolean, which is represented by the question mark. By the way, if you want to know all the placeholders that we can have here, just go to the Python documentation, just type into your web browser, Python struct, and then you can go to the Python documentation and see all the different letters that you can use to, to represent the individual uh, data types. But this is how you package that. So you can say now byte underscore stream, struct pack whatever, and uh, of course we need to also provide the data. So company, day, month, year, awesome. And then I can print the byte stream. Byte stream. There you go. So you can see neural nine is a string, and then you have a bunch of different values here, which we can easily just decode by saying now struct.unpack. And I can now use the same format 10s3i question mark to unpack the byte stream. And the result of this will be a tuple with all the values. So you can see we have neural nine, one, one, twenty two, uh, twenty twenty two and true. And of course, you can also assign them. So you can say company day month year awesome equals 
whatever we get here as a result, and then you can work with the individual values. So this is very useful when it comes to working with uh, sockets via the network. It can also be quite useful when writing to files. So you can also go ahead and say with open uh, data, and then you can say writing bytes SF, and you can just go ahead and say, okay, F dot write the byte stream. And then another reader goes ahead and says, uh, or another guy goes ahead, uh, or another application goes ahead and says open data in reading byte mode SF. And then I can say, I don't know, company day, month, whatever. Um, or I can basically say data equals F dot read. Then I can say uh, company day, whatever equals struct unpack, then this format and data, right? So this is how you could do that with files. Now let's go ahead and do a simple client server example here to see how this works with sockets. This can be quite useful. I used uh, struct actually in my uh, module in my Python module, Python package that I have published on um, on pip that you can download and install via pip vidstream. I use struct in there to transmit the data via the network. So let's go ahead and do a very simple example. Let's say we have a socket. So we import socket, we import struct, and we create a simple client, the client is a socket dot socket socket internet socket and socket sock stream to make it a TCP socket. We want to connect to a server, which is going to be running now on localhost on port 9999. Uh, and then we're going to do certain things. But first of all, let's go ahead and create some data. So let's say we have a first name, which is john, we have a last name, which is Smith. We have an age, which is 35. Uh, we have a gender, which is male, and we have an occupation, which is programmer. And we have a uh, weight so that we have a float, we can say, what is that? Okay, this is not what I meant to do. Weight is equal to 87.52, for example. So this is the data that we want to package now and send via the socket to our server and the server will then be able to unpack the data again into those values. So what can we do here? First of all, we can define a certain, um, we can define a certain template. So we don't have to say just because John has four letters that the first name has four letters, we can say that our structure is the first name will be represented by 10 uh, characters, the second name, so the, la uh, the last name will be uh, represented by another 10 characters, then we have one integer, then we have uh, one character representing the gender, then we have an occupation which can be represented by 15 characters. And then we have a float, for example. So this could be our template. Now, of course, we have more characters than we need. So we're going to fill them up with empty zero bytes, essentially, um, with null terminating bytes, uh, which we then have to strip from the string uh, in order to not have annoying symbols that cannot be parsed. But this could be a template that we provide. This is the format that we provide client and server have the same format so they can communicate. So what we can do now is we can just say, okay, data equals struct dot pack. And the format is again, 10 s 10 s 10 characters, I s 15 s f the one that we discussed before. And we're going to package here the first name, the last name, the age, the gender, the occupation and the weight. As a result of that, we get a byte stream inside of the data variable, we can actually print this byte stream as well. So let's comment out the socket stuff. This is um, actually what's the problem here? Oh, okay, the, the problem, of course, is, as I mentioned, we need to have those being bytes. So what we can do is we can say B in front of every one of them, or we can encode them. So we can say first name dot encode, for example, last name dot encode, um, then also gender dot encode, and occupation dot encode. So that we have byte streams, then this works. And you can see we have john and then a bunch of zero bytes, basically, because we have more characters than we need, we have john having four characters, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, zero characters, filling up the 10 bytes. And then we have Smith, the same thing. Uh, and then we have the other data in there as well. So now what we do is we take the data, and we send it to the server. So we say client connect and then client send data. And that's all the client needs to do. So we close the client afterwards. And then we create our server server.py. 
not sir.py, but server.py. So server, there you go. Import socket, import struct. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say server equals socket, 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 internet socket, socket, sock stream for TCP socket server dot bind. We're going to bind this to localhost 9999 and then server dot listen for connections. And we're going to say client and address is going to be equal to server dot accept. So we're going to accept the connection and then we're going to receive from the client the data. So we're going to say data equals client dot receive. We're going to receive 1024 bytes, even though that's more than we need. And then we have the data and we can say the first name. Now I'm just going to call this first last H gender occupation and weight is going to be equal to struct dot unpack. And then we provide the same format that we had before 10 S 10 S I S 15 S and F. And we wanted to use the data, but we want to unpack the data that was received from the server. And then we can just go ahead and say first print first decode. We don't have to specify UTF eight, we just decode. And then we do that with all the values. So we decode first last the H doesn't have to be decoded. The gender has to be decoded. Um, the occupation also has to be decoded. And the weight does not have to be decoded. So if I run this now, the server is running. Now I start the client, you can see that the server received from the client some stuff, you can see the null terminating bytes here. If we want to get rid of those, what we do is we say, okay, dot decode dot r strip. So strip from the right backslash x zero zero. So we add this thing here to all the decode statements to all the decode calls in the end. So I run this again, I'll run this again. And you can see that all this was now transmitted, you can see also the rounding errors for those of you who don't don't know or don't understand why even though we sent uh, 87.52, we now get 87.5199. Uh, you can watch my video on why 0.1 plus 0.2 does not equal 0.3 in Python, there I explain how floating point numbers are represented, we can solve that problem easily now for our purposes by just saying round the weight up to two decimal places. And then we no longer have the problem in this particular use case here. So you can see what the value of using structs is when working with network uh, via, via the network, you can just take a bunch of data, you can put it into a struct, you can send it via the network. And then if you specify the same format, you get the same values in the right order with, um, with the right uh, paddings and all that. So this is how you use structs in Python. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.